right, Dr. Mansell, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm good, brother. Nice being here with you. Yeah, okay. Um, so, you know, a, l- a little background. We talked about it. I've been following you on Twitter for, for a little bit now. And one of the things that I've always wanted to talk to you about is um, being a father. Because when I, you know, every, you know, because not, not also just being a father, but um, dad jokes, right? <laughs> I mean, it's like, <laughs> you got some good ones, man. And so I really wanted to, I really want to just kind of talk to you about, um, you know, coming into fatherhood and, and, and circle back around to how do you come up with the material for dad jokes? Where do, where do dads come up with this material? So, I mean, like what, what is fatherhood like for you, man? Oh, so actually this is like, this is the, the, the toughest question to hit me with because <laughs> I'm actually like, so I'm a very uh, emotional person at times. And there's like okay. certain things that just get me mm-hmm. and like being the dad or being a dad is one of those things. Like I'm probably going to struggle talking about it without, crying which is actually kind of sure. ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> no no i feel you because it's like it's after you're in it for a while I, I noticed that it's like you know we grew up trying to be so like hard or or, or keep our emotions at, at bay but um once you sort of start getting into fatherhood yeah. it just breaks you down i i i say it once I actually made a podcast episode um because i have a girl i'm like being a father of of a young girl is like eating glass you know, it's just little ground up glass. And after a while, your insides are shredded and oh. you're just jelly. <laughs> yeah. So I got I got broken like right away, like pretty okay. much as soon as my 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 firstborn, my son was was born. Like the littlest things would just like get tears. Right. Like he okay. would do, you know, they don't even do when they're new. They don't even do anything that special. Right. Like, mm-hmm. you know, they, they roll over. Right, right, right. right. Suddenly, like rolling over is like, oh man, rolling over is adorable, Uh right? Like uh you're talking to them and they just like, you know, they poop, and and then they smile about it, and you find that adorable, and you'd never find that adorable in an adult, but like this little person, your Mm -hmm. little person doing it, you just want to tell everybody, and none of your friends really care that your kid just pooped, but for you, it's like special, right? And yeah, I got I, I got lucky. I got to watch them grow from like, you know, that to mm-hmm. like now I, I have relationships with them, right? Like each of them have their own like unique relationship with dad. And and how, how old are they? So my eldest is eleven now, okay. the second's eight, and my baby girl is six. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See, yeah, mine is uh she's seventeen, so I'm 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 a little bit further down the line. Oh, yeah. um, done with this phase of it, <laughs> but obviously it, it it's never over. Um was 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 being a father or or is being a father what you thought it would be? Was it something that you always wanted to do or you know, so my wife and I joke about it. I always wanted kids, right? Like really? I pretty much I met her and, and I wanted kids quick, like early, mm-hmm. I should say. Like I wanted to have my kids by thirty, which we got, we succeeded okay. at it. Um, and I, 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 as soon as we met, like within three months, I'm like hitting her up with like, so what do you think of this baby name? And we weren't like talking, let's make a baby now, right? Right? Like, but we were like already that conversation was there. Like, how many kids? What names are we thinking about? Like. Mm-hmm that kind of stuff was already there. And mm-hmm. so like we got married, what is it like two and a half years in um, and we were already like, okay, baby, let's go. Right. Um, and yeah, like we, we had our first and it, it, it was everything I, it was more than I thought it would have been. Like I knew I was looking forward to it, mm-hmm. but like, I think I, I tell my guy friends, like you're never prepared. Never. And assuming like you're good, you're good guy right like some guys yeah, are yeah. Like bad dads but like yeah. you're never prepared for how like this new person mm-hmm. shifts your focus like i was a right. bouncer at the time and like okay. almost right after my baby was born like this is when i was in university as a bouncer like right after my baby was born i'm like you know what i quit mm-hmm. and the reason i told them i quit is like i'm a dad like i can't afford to take these risks right. anymore right like i can't right. get in a fight with somebody who's too drunk 
because like what if i get hurt like i am that person for you're responsible for yeah. someone else. and i change like university behavior right like you're in university I, you drink you know you mm-hmm. you, you smoke weed um <laughs> and like um, almost immediately all of that quit because mm-hmm. i couldn't like i had to be a hundred percent because and it was even the reasoning looking back at it was kind of ridiculous because I was like, what if he gets up in the middle of the night and he starts to cry too much and we right. need to take him to the hospital? I was young, right? That doesn't make right. sense. So well, I'm like, I got to be 100% just in case. Well, you're, 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 you're trying to be visual in a situation that you have no experience you know yeah. about then they always say that about like the first one right it's like <laughs> parents are always like go extra hard and try to do everything right for the first one by the and third then, one you're like you're fine yeah whatever and it's like i, I only have the one so it's like you know you, you three times deeper than, than than where i am um but one of the things i, I wanted to ask because everyone i shouldn't say everyone but most people love their kids i call it the programming right mm-hmm. you can't really get around it um, and that's a good thing, right? You know, it's like where we we kill them or neglect them, and and that's not good for anybody, right? Or not yeah. good for us because we we were once in that in that position. But yeah. um, what was the hard part about about like being a father? What was the thing that that really forced you to make some hard decisions? Because you know, obviously. Uh, from 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 being a bouncer, you can just go in and and, and quit because you didn't really care about that, right? right? It was like you were it was a job you were working for someone else that was someone else's interest. But what was the what was the hard part about about being a, being? A I can't even say it was, I had much like these kids. I've been really blessed in that way. Like I've had not I won't say the word perfect, but like I've had mm-hmm. amazing kids. Like they've mm-hmm. made parenting like a walk in the park for the most part. I think the okay. only time I could say I made any sort of meaningful sacrifice for them yeah. is um, when I gave up chess, like the first time, right? So when my second was huh. born, yeah, when my second was born, I was working full time. Um, I was the only one uh, driving in our family. I was a manager at the time. So I'd work late and then, you know, you get home, And then you have a chess tournament and I just didn't have the mental bandwidth to go like, I used to study chess like three hours a day, right? Like Mm -hmm, to to get mm -hmm. to like the master title and stuff. So like I would, I didn't have the bandwidth anymore. And so like, I couldn't go to tournaments. Like I didn't have the energy to like sit there and play a guy for three hours. Right. And I like, I said, you know what? I just can't do it. So I gave it up. Mm -hmm. I gave up serious chess um, after my second. But even that, like, yeah, I love chess. I still play like online, like speed games and stuff. But sure. like, to me, it was a sacrifice, but it's not a meaningful sacrifice, right? Like, okay, so I just yeah. spend more time at home with them. It, it was, it was okay. So that sounds. I mean, I, I, I definitely understand what you're saying. If it was a sacrifice, but it wasn't meaningful, because. Like when my when my daughter was born, I was in California at the time, mm. and um, the finances just weren't add, adding up. Right, I had just oh. bought a house, and then you know we got pregnant, and I had this 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 new kid, and everything just because, like you were saying, you become hyper aware and you become vigilant. And I was very very aware that I was maybe a thousand dollars short in my budget, Ooh. and so um, long story short, we ended up going to Oklahoma. Uh, mm-hmm. to Tulsa and a lot of people were concerned because a they didn't know anything about Oklahoma and b what people might think of Oklahoma doesn't seem like it would be the most hospitable place for for black people and that's not true <laughs> but and that's another conversation um but to me it was a small sacrifice I, I didn't care about you know my childhood home or or you know friends and everything it's like what do I have to do to put you know to to put myself in position to take care of this 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 little girl um but and then after the fact it's it's you know because you're no longer going to parties you're no longer hanging out and i tell everyone i never missed a party i've never missed a party i've never missed a hangout i've never missed anything because i was with my daughter Mm -hmm. and 
that's the only thing that I I I wanted to do. So you're not missing anything. See, it's but, funny because you're right. Because I didn't even think of it that way. Yeah, you stop going to parties, but it's I viewed it as I changed as opposed mm-hmm. to I'm not going because of like my kids. Right. They right. just didn't appeal to me anymore to go to like a party and get you know like when I was young you drink and it's like two o'clock mm-hmm. in the morning you're like oh yeah where are we going next but. Yeah. And like you have a kid, it's like, well, it's 11 o'clock, I should get home. Right.